Messiah to come. He came in human form and they crucified him. What do you think they're going to do to you? So let's stop living to please others and let's make the most of it. Fellas, say make the most of it. Victor, if we can go to our focus point really quickly. Fellas, I want you to jot this down, screen cap this. We're going to say this over and over again. I'm going to be asking Victor to put this on the screen over and over again. If this was a song, fellas, this is the chorus. This is the hook right here. And it probably kind of rhymes a little bit. Let's look at that focus point. If you don't remember anything else this morning, fellas, please remember this. I need wisdom, good planning, and hard work to make the most of my opportunities. Didn't rhyme too much. We could make it rhyme if we wanted to, though. I need wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. I need good planning. Somebody say good planning. I need hard work. Somebody say hard work. This is the key to unlocking the sweet spot of your life, fellas. This might be the most important teaching you've ever heard next to the gospel because a lot of us get saved and then we get dormant. We sit around and we come on a Sunday, we sit in nice chairs, we drink coffee, eat some donuts and let somebody come on stage and do the job. Meanwhile, people are perishing around us going to hell at our jobs and our families and our neighborhoods on our social media followers and we don't feel equipped. But you are, fellas. I came this morning from D.C. to tell you that God has deposited in you what you need to do what he's put you on this earth to do. But you need some wisdom. You need some good planning. And it's going to take hard work. Amen. Let's get some working definitions up, fellas. If you're taking notes, I want you to jot these down. Let's talk about wisdom. What is wisdom? Let's get the definition of wisdom on the screen. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, and all you get, get knowledge, get wisdom, get understanding, get discernment. Get knowledge, get wisdom, get understanding, get discernment. Let's break it down. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is application of the information. Understanding is comprehension of the information. And discernment is determining Differing between right and wrong. You need that in your life, fellas. But we're going to focus on the wisdom part for a moment. Once you get the information, you got to apply that information. Otherwise, it's useless knowledge. We have to seek information, fellas. But a lot of us, we come to church. And if we can be honest, we're conditioned to just sit and get information. But the application is how do I practically carry this out in my home? How do I practically deposit this into my children, into my spouse, into my girlfriend, at my job, at, yo, at school, wherever I'm at with my friends? How do I apply this to my life and others? And then we talked about opportunity in our focus point. Opportunity, the working definition we're going to use today is a good position, a chance or prospect as for advancement or success, fellas, if we want to be successful, we have to take the chance. Somebody say chance. Peter, he is the only disciple that experienced walking on water because he took the what? Chance. He made the most of his opportunity. Fellas, somebody say make the most of it. We only got one life to live on this earth, fellas. I know some people believe that we can, you know, reincarnate, come back as animals, come back as different people. The Bible says it is given unto man once to die, then cometh the judgment. So we only got one life. How many, how many years? 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. Some people die. A dude I know for years, he just got killed. 40, 41, 40. People die all the time. See, like the milk in our refrigerators have expiration dates on them. We don't. If we did, I wonder how we'd live our lives. Justin Timberlake did this movie years ago where time was money and they had these meters on their wrists. You remember that? Yeah. And they were earning time. Because once time runs out, you die. What if that clock was ticking on you and you could see it? Would you bojangle and procrastinate on doing that thing you said you was going to do? 
that book you said you were going to write, that program you said you were going to start, that business you said you were going to start, when is going to be the right time? Because we don't have life's clock counting down, fellas, it's easy for us to get stagnant. But I want you to remember our focus point this morning. Let's get that on the screen. If you don't remember anything else, remember the focus point today. I need wisdom, good planning, and hard work. What kind of work, fellas? To make the most of my opportunities. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. You're like, finally, this guy's going to open the Bible. I need a life coach. Came to hear the word of God. I got you, bruh. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. There's that word, wisdom. Here's where we got the focus point from, verse 16. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we could use the next 20 minutes just to talk about this passage, but we got some more to unpack. So let's go back real quick. Let's go back. Ephesians 5.15, one more time. Be careful how you live. That's a warning. That's a warning. Don't overlook that, brothers. That, that's not something to just read, slide past. God is telling us, God used the apostle Paul to write to the church in Ephesus to say, be careful how you live because you might get caught up. You might trip. You might fall into the trap of comfortability, the trap of complacency, the trap of not making the most of every opportunity. Don't live like fools just living for the American dream. But like those who are wise, what's wisdom? We talked about earlier, applying knowledge. Now that you know better, do better. Look at verse 16. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what God wants you to do. Somebody say, God, help me to understand what you want me to do with my wife, with my kids, at my job, at my school on my social media, in my everything. Hmm. Hmm. The word opportunity really is kairos. When you see that word opportunity in the Greek, in the original language the New Testament was written in, that word opportunity is kairos, which means a limited period of time. I often think about the metro train doors when I read this passage. If you ever will catch the train, and you were upstairs on the platform, right, Cliff? And you strolling like, you know, you got time. You hear that wind. The train coming. The train coming. You, you put that fair card in. You might have been cool at first. You running down the escalator because you see them lights blinking on the ground. And it says, boom, boom, doors closing. You want to slide. Oh. Ah! <sighs> Everybody cute to the bus coming in the bus. You about to miss that Metro bus. Anybody ever been there? You going to catch that Metro bus? Oh, you was cool at first. You said, oh, shoot. Oh. You lose all your cool when you know the doors are closing. See, we don't see these doors that God is talking about right here. It's called the doors of opportunity. You're only going to be in high school once. This is for my nephew over here. My nephews, a lot of teenagers don't make the most of the opportunities, Dave. They want to procrastinate. They want to, you know, do what everybody else doing, what seems fun and cool. Luke, same thing. People want to disrespect their parents, talk about the substitute, teach all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm going to do what I want to do, cuss the teacher out, all that. But they're missing the opportunities that God has for them. My nephew's like, why are you talking to me, uncle? Because I want to include you in this, man. Because if my nephews can get this now, they won't live with regret later. Our focus point, fellas, if you don't remember anything else, let's get the focus point back on the screen. I need wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Good planning. Somebody say good planning. And hard work to make the most of my opportunities. 
We are to make the most of our opportunities to share the gospel and we are to make the most of our time in other areas of our lives. Just look at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Let's take a look together, fellas. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 through 11 says this. Hmm. Oh, we got a different translation. That's okay. We got an NIV. I'll read it from here. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Wow. The New Living Translation says, take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Okay, God. <laughs> this is in the Bible. God's telling us to look at the ants for advice. Take, let me read from up there. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. Let's go to the next verse. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Let's keep going. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you slugger? When will you get up from your sleep? <laughs> a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Any of y'all know people that just be chilling all the time? What you doing? Chilling. What you doing tomorrow? Chilling. What you doing next week? Chilling, you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna be chilling, man. You know how I do, bruh, you know? It's, you know, uh, one day I'm gonna make it, you know, but for now I'm just, you know, I'm just chilling to a meet. Time waits for no man. And before you know it, you chilling and chilling until you in your grave. Somebody once said, you can be a dreamer, but don't live in your bed. At some point, you got to get up and get out and do something with the dream. And don't be afraid of failure, fellas. Failure is a great teacher. I've learned a lot from failure. But I would have never learned the lessons and gotten the way I've gotten in life if I didn't try. A lot of us are afraid of embarrassing ourselves. We won't even step out there. That's the trick of the enemy, to get you to be a sluggard, to get you to be a lazy bones, to get you to chill. So the next time you walk in and you see ants on the ground, don't step on them, watch them. Them ants are making the most. At, at the cookout this summer, you're going to see the ants working hard. They're getting ready for what's coming next. Don't step on them. Don't get mad. If you walked away from your food and the ant is on your potato chip, don't try to swat him away. Watch what he do with that potato chip. That opportunity you wasted, he about to make an asset. See, fellas, we get mad at people when they make the most of opportunities. How come he got the promotion? Because he made the most of his opportunities. What you mad at him for? Hating. What, what you hating on him for? Because he's advancing and you aren't. Instead of spending that time hating, spend that time observing and studying and saying, how can I apply myself to make the most of the opportunities? Focus point. I need wisdom, good planning, and hard work to make the most of my opportunities. The word understand in Ephesians 5 implies us using our minds to seek God in prayer and reading of scripture. Hmm. Understand what the Lord wants you to do. That comes from you praying and reading scripture. If the only time you look at a verse is on this screen, once a week, bro, you missing it, man. You missing life. Life is passing you by. You're standing at the metro station of life, and that door is constantly closing in front of you, and that train is pulling off. The train of more peace in your life has pulled up, opened the doors, closed, and pulled off because you don't read the Bible and pray. The train of better understanding your wife and how to communicate and spend quality time with her has pulled up in front of you, opened its doors, closed, and pulled away. The train of learning how to be a better father and how to connect to your son because your father didn't connect with you and you struggle with that. I understand that. But you can read books. You can get a mentor. You can listen to podcasts. You can be a better father than your father was. But when you sit back and you say, I wonder what pastor going to preach on Sunday. I wonder what pastor staying going to talk about on Saturday. Hope it'll bless me. 
and you don't pick up your word on your own and pray, you're living like a spiritual baby, brothers. I'm not here to insult you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to motivate you. Somebody said, I don't want no life coach. Get to the word. Yeah, I preach the word. Now I'm going to coach you. You can't be a baby in this world, man. Spiritual babies need milk. When my nephews were babies, they couldn't feed themselves. They needed adults to feed them. Now they're old enough to feed themselves. And if your kids who are of age came to you, Daddy, can I get some food? Boy, you're 15. Get up and get your own food. How do you think God going to look at you? When you say, oh, God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this world, man. I'm supposed to connect people to you. I'm supposed to use my abilities, man. And God, like, you've been on earth 33 years and you ain't figured that out yet? You've been on earth 40 years, 50 years, you still need the pastor's milk bottle? You're supposed to be a self-feeder by now, bro. They, they, well, they won't let me start a Bible study. Start your own Bible study. You don't need Pastor Stan to acknowledge you for you to start. Fellas, we have to kill this mindset that we're waiting on a human to acknowledge us to do something. God has acknowledged you, so do something. Somebody say, make the most of it. Mm. Too many of us don't like to, too many of us don't see the opportunities God has regularly given to us to help us live more purposefully. We can't find a job, but we won't take resume building classes. We won't check out programs. We won't go to Google. We won't call 411 for service. We won't pray about it. We won't seek somebody else. We just kind of think it's going to fall in our laps, man. That is a lazy mindset that will get you nowhere. Our English word opportunity, I think we got this coming on the screen. This might be a slide. There it is. Thank you, Victor. Our English word opportunity comes from the Latin, and it means toward the port. It suggests a ship taking advantage of the wind. Think about a, a, a sailboat, fellas. God causes the wind to blow in your life. We just heard the wind a few moments ago. <laughs> Some of y'all felt it when you came in here. I had my hood on when I came in here. Like, oh, dang. I ain't this supposed to be spring, but it's cold outside. A sailboat cannot create the wind, but a sailboat is positioned and prepared for the opportunity for to move them forward. Catch the wind. It's like playing football. God's the quarterback. He got the football. He's looking for who's open. And if you running out in the field and you ain't looking back and you don't got your hands up, you, man, when the ball going to come to me? Pop. Hit you right in the head. <laughs> your, your eyes got to be attentive. Your hands got to be ready to what, fellas? And then run. Right, Cliff? See, toward the port suggests a ship taking advantage of the wind and tides to arrive safely in the harbor. The brevity of life is a strong argument for making the best use of the opportunities God gives us because we only got one life to live, fellas, and God is constantly doing this in our lives. Over your marriage, over your friendships, over your money, but you don't have the financial literacy to understand how to use the money wisely. Somebody, somehow you come upon an extra hundred dollars and your instant thought is, whew, I know what I'm going to buy. Your bank account sale wasn't ready to receive it, to move the bank account forward. Are y'all with me? You're struggling to connect with your wife and there's all types of support groups out there. There's all types of help. If there's a man of God in this church or any church that has a marriage that you think is of the caliber you would like to have, instead of humbling yourself and going to talking to him, you're doing the same old stuff over and over again that's not working. You and your wife are disconnected and not communicating. Brothers, try something else because God's blowing and trying to blow love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness over you, but your sails aren't in position to catch the wind. Somebody said, I got to get in position. 
to make the most of it. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. Here's the rest of our focus point. You thought it was just my own words. Good planning and what? Leads to what? But hasty shortcuts lead to what? Them get-rich-quick schemes, fellas? Come on, man. You want to make a million dollars in 20 minutes? <laughs> Just give me your credit card, social security number, and the keys to your house. <laughs> Come on, y'all. You want the shortcut. You want the quick money, the fast money. No, 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 no. You want to be successful in life? My nephews, don't miss this. It takes good planning and hard work. Some of us put in the hard work, but we don't have good planning. And some of us plan all day, but we don't do nothing. <laughs> You've been planning for 25 years, man. Take the next step. It might be good to have an accountability group of brothers in here and say, you know what? By the end of the year, I want to have this done. And we hold each other accountable every Saturday. How you doing with this, brother? You want to improve in this area? You want to grow here? Man, how you doing with that area? We don't want to buy no personal lives, man. We just want to, you know, eat some donuts, you know, eat some fruit, you know, worship God and, you know. Here's somebody on the stage, and I, I got mine for Saturday. That's cool for some people. But if you really want to advance and be successful, you need accountability with God and brothers that are going to hold you to the things you know you should do. Hmm. Good planning and hard work go hand in hand. There's no point in talking about time management if you work haphazardly at the work you're doing. Fellas, you need good planning and hard work. You reap what you sow. Faith without works is dead. We could talk about it on and on, but I'm running out of time. And maybe you are too. You don't know how long you're going to live. What's your legacy going to be? Man, he was always, he always said he was going. If it's your time and your casket is right here. Pastor Stan, one of the other pastors is speaking over your life. He had this good idea. Man. He had, hmm, he was going to focus point. If you don't remember anything else we talk about today, fellas, please don't miss this. I need wisdom, good planning, and what, fellas? To make the most of my opportunities. For the sake of time, we're going to jump into this last part right here. Intro to the Four Quadrants. I got this from Stephen Covey. He has a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He's not a Christian, but these are biblical principles that he took and made a lot of money off of. <laughs> so if a non-believer can take it and make a lot of money off of it, we as believers can take it and at least apply it to our lives. <laughs> this ain't no Christian author. Well, he's using Christian principles. So maybe we should too, huh, guys? Let's get this on the screen. The definition of important is of great significance or consequence. Did I give that to you, Victor? I may not have. My bad. Ugh. Sorry. All right, fellas, tune in for me. The definition of important is of great significance or consequence. The definition of urgency is requiring immediate action or attention. The definition of the urgency addiction is a self-destructive behavior that temporarily fills the void created by unmet needs. Oh, there it is. That's one of them. Sorry, Victor. I meant to give you the other two. Let's, let's focus on that for a moment, the urgency addiction. Again, the urgency addiction is a self-destructive behavior that temporarily fills the void created by unmet needs. A lot of us live in the urgency addiction, and that's why we don't have time to do the stuff we're supposed to be doing. Everything's urgent, and we're addicted to the fast pace. Go, 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 go. Let's look at this, this chart. Let's get this chart on the screen. And fellas, I see people taking their phones out. Please put this, this chart in your phones. Take a snapshot of it. We're going to break down the quadrants here. Now, we got quadrant one in the top left corner. That's things that are important and urgent. Okay? In the top right corner in quadrant two, we got things that are important and not urgent. Y'all with me? 
in the bottom left corner, we got things that are not important, but they're urgent. And then in the bottom right corner, we got things that are not important and they're not urgent. Now, let's take a look at what's in the first, the first quadrant, important and urgent, crises, pressing problems, deadline-driven projects, meetings and preparations. Ah, I know we've all felt that before. Oh, man. Oh, God. This is, a, this is a lot on me, man. Oh, man. What do we do? Oh, my job is getting on me, right? Quadrant two. It's important, but it's not urgent. Preparations. You're taking time to prepare things. You've got presentations you're working on. Your values are clear and clarified, right? Your planning, your relationship building, you have empowerment. That's a great place to spend most of your time. Down here, it's not important and it's urgent. Interruptions. You know when you're working on something and that, that cousin call you and you, oh. what's up, cousin? Can I borrow $10? No. You got notifications on your phone, so your social media is always pinging. Ping, 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 ping. Somebody's always coming in the office and they have a problem or crisis, right? You don't have time to think. Phone calls, interruptions, some reports, some meetings, many proximate pressing matters. People that work in the cubicle next to you, you always hear their problems. They're always coming over and it always eats up your time. So you have to stay late and work late or bring your work home because you didn't spend the time you had at work to work on work. Many popular activities. Oh, I can get to my work later, man. I can get to this thing I'm working on for God later. I'm going to go ahead and just do that. It seems pretty fun. If you spend too much time there, it's dangerous. The last one over here, it's not important and it's not urgent. Trivia, busy work, phone calls, time wasters, internet, social media. Oh, sit on the toilet and you go to sit down and do your business. Before you know it, it's been two hours, you're still on Facebook. Your legs tired, your legs done fell asleep because you're sitting there like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, I can't get up. Oh, how long I've been on this phone? Oh, two hours. Oh, God. Hey, can we be honest? So, irrelevant emails, excessive TV, you Netflix and chilling all the time. You're working on it, amen. Let's break it down. Let's get this, the quadrant one, two, three, four on the screen. I think I gave this to my man, Victor. There you go. Let's get one in, let's, number one. Quadrant number one is manage. Did I give you that one? Manage, bam, there it is. So in quadrant number one, you manage crises and pressing problems. Quadrant two, you focus on strategies and values. That's where you should spend your most time. Quadrant three, you need to avoid interruptions and busy work. In quadrant four, you need to limit the trivial and wasteful. Let's do it again. Here's how you deal with those quadrants because they're going to come in your life. Number one, quadrant one, you got to manage. Go back to number one for me. Manage crises and pressing problems. Manage them. They're going to come up. But don't let it overtake you. Hey, I got five minutes that I can help you with this thing. And I have to get back to this. But no, but see, it's going to, I need to walk you through the whole story. No, 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 no. I got five minutes. We can do five minutes now or we can schedule 30 minutes later. Stop letting people take control of your schedule, fellas. Number two in quadrant two, this is where we should spend most of our time. Focus on strategies and values. Focus on strategies and, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You can, um. Not, not, yeah, that, thank you. Focus on strategies and values. Thank you, Victor. Number three, you should avoid interruptions and busy work. Avoid that. Put your phone on do not disturb. Only have your family members and your favorites contacts so they're the only people that, can, that call can go through if you're working on something. Because every random call and notification from every app isn't worth your time. The last one, quadrant four, you got to limit the trivial and wasteful. Most of our time should be spent in quadrant two, but unfortunately, we often times get stuck in quadrants three and four. Very good, brother. Doing things that are not important. Check out these stats. I think I gave you the stats too, Victor. Time spent in quadrants, the average person versus the successful person. Yes. Let's go to number one first, Victor. Quadrant number one, average person spends 25 to 30% of their time in quadrant one, while successful people spend 20 to 25% of their time in quadrant one. I didn't give you that. My bad, Victor. Victor's like, Devin, help me out so I can help you. <laughs> quadrant number two, the average person spends 15% of their time there. Remember, you're supposed to spend most of your time in quadrant two. 
The average person only spends 15% of their time planning, doing preparations where their values are clear, building relationships, empowerment, exercise, making sure you're eating right, spending quality time with your loved ones. Most people only spend like 15% of their time there, but successful people spend how much time, fellas? 65 to 80%. And I probably didn't give Victor the other two, but the, the numbers are bad. My point is, quadrant number two, fellas, is where we got to spend the most of our time. That's where you're praying, you're reading the scriptures, your values are clear. You're getting the clarity you need. You're focusing on what really matters. You say, Pastor Devin, how can I apply this message to my life? How can I take it one step further in my spiritual journey? Here's our next steps. And then we're done for this morning. Pray for wisdom. Knowing the right thing to do and then doing it. Plan the steps to your sweet spot. God, help me to get more time in quadrant two. I need to spend time praying, reading scriptures. What am I naturally gifted at doing? And, and how do I feel is very, very, very connecting to you, how I can connect others to, to, to you, God? What, come, what flows very easily to me with that ministry? Then put in the hard work. Put in the hard work of implementing those steps by spending more time in quadrant two. Because hmm. we need wisdom. We need good planning. And we need hard work to make the most of the opportunities God's given us. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before you as your sons and we say, God, we, we, we fall into these quadrants, God, in different areas of our lives. And sometimes we're not spending enough time where we should. Would you please forgive us, God, for not making the most of this life you've given us, God, for not positioning our sail in the position to catch the wind of your grace, the wind of your prosperity, God. We want to be better sons. We want to be better husbands. We want to be better brothers. We want to be better fathers and uncles and grandfathers. Lord, would you show us how to be more like you, how to make the most of the opportunities you've given us. Help us, God, to find the sweet spot, to find where our natural abilities intersect with connecting others to you. Help us to seek after it intentionally that we can bring you glory and make the most of the time we have. We pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Give God praise. Wow. Hey, look, brother. We have got to have you back here again before this year ends, man. And, you know, and every brother, I'm telling you right now, every brother in their heart is saying like this, man, I, I wish I would have invited some brothers to come, man, to hear this because it's blessing us like this. And it's something that we can apply right now. I mean, we can get busy with it right now. And so, man, thank you just for being obedient to God. Thank you for allowing him to pour into you and then you pour into us and we pray that God will fill you afresh. We're going to get you back here before this year ends. Amen. And we're going to pack this place so that brothers can hear this word. Amen. So thank God for you. Hey, now, what we have is like right after this, we, we, we take a few 15 minutes or so. And we just get together at the tables. And we want to talk about this. And we have the, uh, did you have like, you had the focus points? We have the questions. The questions. You have the questions. Okay, y'all see the questions there. We wanna, we wanna, you know, chop that up a little bit. Amen. And and, and bless one another in this process. And then after that, I'm gonna come up and pray, dismiss us. And you know how y'all do, man. You know, we're doing the chairs, getting all that together, and some of y'all praying and all of that. But we can at least be dismissed on time. Amen. All right. So let's get to these tables, man, and let's let's do this, man. Number one, number two, number three. Y'all see it. Let's do it.